Psalm 1 to 8. I first preached this in uh, 2011, isn't it? Uh, ask, ask Dr. Gilbert when he got married. I preached at his wedding. I preached this. The Blessed Family. And this, actually, when we teach, we should be teaching Psalm 127 and 128 together. It is in the same, the message is the same, for the family, to the family. So, trusting in God brings family blessings. And here we have the picture of a productive farm, a hard-working farmer and his faithful wife. And then, children. Wonderful. Wonderful six verses put together for our edification. So a song of accents didn't tell us who is the author. And so the blessed, verse 1. Who is the blessed one? And then the rest of this psalm, the blessings. Verse 1. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in His ways. Blessed is everyone. I underline in my Bible. Everyone. Now, this is, there is a difference. Because if you read all the way to Romans 11, and all Israel shall be saved, then you think, wow, all Israel, everyone will be saved. Is that true? No. Those who follow, who accept Jesus Christ, they shall be saved. But as a nation, they are saved. But those who reject Christ, no. But when the word here is blessed is everyone, that means what? It's down to the individual, your responsibility and mine. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord. By now, you know what is fearing the Lord, right? You know what is fearing the Lord? Not hiding under the table, running away from Him. Fearing the Lord, that means what? We revere Him. We worship Him. And we obey Him. This is fearing the Lord. Revere Him, worship Him, and Obey. If you want to remember that, you just remember R O S. Also, again. How you? Sometimes I put all these acronyms, uh, so it's easier for me to remember. But that is fearing the Lord. So, fearing the Lord is one thing. Secondly, who walks in His ways, obedience. So, if you say you fear the Lord but you don't obey also doesn't amount to anything. But the blessed one is the one who fears the Lord and walks in His ways. Then the blessings. When you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy and it shall be well with you. When you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy and it shall be well with you. While you when you sit down at the table with your kids and so on, and then you say no the food, wow. Wow. You 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 really appreciate because you really work for this. The fruits of your labor. But do not be like Haggai. You know Haggai? Haggai is something for us. Okay. You turn to Haggai chapter one, verse six. This afternoon, I'll be preaching at the evening service. I'll be touching a little bit on Haggai and Zechariah and something. But what happened was the people of Israel, they were in exile. And then Nehemiah brought them back. And they first built the wall, right? They rebuilt the war as a Now, 
18 years later, after Nehemiah came back, then um, Haggai came back from exile. And he came, and he found that the people had been very discouraged. They have been neglecting. Uh, they, after they built Nola, they get tired. The temple, the wall may be ready, but the temple was in disarray. It was in ruins and it, uh, broken down and so on. So what they did was they stopped building the temple and they neglected the reconstruction of the temple for about 16 years. And they started to build what? Build their own HDB. Build their own bungalow. Build their own house. And so Haggai came back and he said, Hey, first you build the Lord's house. Remind them. To go back to what they were supposed to do. And meanwhile, as you neglect the Lord's house, what has happened to you? You look in Haggai chapter 1 verse 6. You have so much and bring in little. You eat but do not have enough. You drink but you are not filled with rain. You clothe yourself with, no, you clothe yourselves but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag with holes. True or not? Some people say, every month I earn, but I don't know where the money went to. Never enough. ATM, TTT, take out the money. By the middle of the month, huh? no more. Waiting for the next paycheck. That is not exactly a very state of blessedness. But here in Psalm 1 to 8, blessed the blessed one, when you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy and it shall be well with you. So this farmer has been working hard and this farmer has been blessed. He has a very fruitful farm and he, and he eats and he's happy and he's prospering. So as I mentioned, you have to read all this, you go and read Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 to 6, the promises of blessings are all there. Verse 3, what else blessings? Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the very heart of your house. Your laupo shall be like a fruitful vine. You know, vine and olive, when you go to Israel, you will know they are a very major part of the daily living of the Israelites. Their food, their ingredient, and so on. Vine and olive, very important. And so here, uh, and she is like a fruitful vine. And vine is also a picture of joy. Picture of joy when, when when they have wedding and so on, they have from the fruit of the vine, they make wine. So your wife is a bringer of joy to you and to your household. In the very heart of your house. <coughs> now, in the PMC, I tell, I tell them, your home is your wife's castle. You ask any woman, any wife, whether it is a small house or a big house, that is her castle. You understand? How she wants to put out the curtain in colors that you don't appreciate, you know, she put water plants in this and that and so on. But that is her castle. And she will do it the way she likes it. But when that is not her castle. Then we have Now, some people come back to me and say, Hey, you tell my kids not to stay with me. I didn't say, You told my son get married and leave my, my family. I didn't say, you know, you must attend my PMC class to understand the full context. But, your wife is in the very heart of your house. Now, 
So you have the vine and you have the house. If you look at houses, sometimes you see vines which are curling and wrapping around the walls of the house, right? You see that? So vines are very tender, very slender kind of plant. But they are valuable nonetheless because they are quite uh, uh, prominent in the lifestyle of the, in the food and the diet of the Israelites. So your wife is a very tender and precious and valuable person that God has given to you. And even as the vine wraps around the house, your wife is supposed to cling to you as one. And the two are one. You understand? The wife as the vine clinging to the house, clinging to the husband, and they are one. That is a very, very good picture here. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the very heart of your house. Next, we talk about the children. What about the kids? Your children like olive plants all around your table. Wow, wonderful. Your children are like olive plants. Olive plants come from where? Olive tree. Yeah. So these are the offshoots of the parent plant. And it speaks of strength, it speaks of vitality and fruitfulness because out of this, they will reproduce olive oil, I mean more plants and then oil in the future and so on. So this is a picture not only of vitality, of strength, but it is also a picture of promise, of potential because from this will come forth many more olive plants, many more olive products that are useful. You can't expect durian from an apple tree, right? So, this, the Sami's wrote, didn't write, I mean, uh, in Israel also got pomegranate fruit. Israel also got orange. Israel also got other, but the Sami's wrote, your children like olive plants. The olive oil is so precious and valuable. They are even used, you know, in the temple, in the inner court, you have the menorah, the candlestick, and then the candlestick are lighted with what oil? Olive oil, precious. Your children are like olive plants all around your table. How good it is when you come for a meal and then you see your family is there at the table. It's not a quiet meal. But today, today we come to the table and then we are all doing what's that? <laughs> so, at the family table, we avoid playing with the phone. And we should make, make an effort. Otherwise, phone ring, okay, we do it. So, so I put my phone at the fridge and away from my table. Unless, the agenda. if not, then, then let's have family time. It is for the family order. But I know some families, uh, the meat cook, the food is there. Okay? Whoever comes home first, eat first. Huh? At your own time, own target, carry on. Like what they say in the family. But in our family, unless the, the kid is in university, got, got lesson, got lecture, or whatever, overseas, but those who are able, we come back, and we have dinner together. Lunch is because we are working, but dinner we will have together. Weekends we will always go out and have a meal together. Okay. You look at Job 29 verse 5. Job 29 verse 5. When the Almighty was yet with me, when my children were around me, when my children were around me. That is a picture of blessing. 
blessedness when your children are at around your table. That is your family altar. So you, even as you give, provide spiritual food for them, I mean physical food, also not neglect, do not neglect the spiritual food. Share with them. When they were younger, after the meal, we were doing Bible study and so on. I know for most of us, uh, the kids are really quite big. They got wings, they flew off already. Can I suggest, start with your grandkids. Really, really. You can teach your kids, or when the grandkids come to visit you, or whatever, start with them. Okay? Never too late. So, verse 4. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. So it's a repetition. So in other words, what I what the psalmist told us, verse 2, verse 3, verse 4, he said, Lest behold, thus shall the man. From verse 2 and 3, thus shall you be blessed who fears the Lord. But it means hard work, huh? It doesn't just come. Some people just fold their arms and say, Oh, God just bless me. It will be grace. From what I read here, you must love your wife. From what I read here, you must train your children. From what I read here, you must work hard. Then your farm or your fruits. You understand? So it doesn't come automatic. Wow. Grace. Just accept Jesus Christ and everything will be set your way. I must work hard. I must love my wife. I must train my kids. Verse 5. And the Lord, the Lord bless you out of Zion. And you may see the good of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Yes, may you see your children's children. This is a wonderful promise for the people of Israel. When they read this, the Lord bless you out of Zion. Out of Zion. Why is Zion? Zion is where the temple is. Zion is where God is for the Jews. That's why they go. This is part of the pilgrimage, right? The pilgrimage song. So that's why they're going to Zion. That's why they're going to Jerusalem. And God is there. And that is... I mean, the temple is, physically God is not there, but the temple is their means of connecting with God. And so, God will bless you out of Zion, the best place. That's the place of the Ark, the Ark of the Covenant. And may you see the good of Jerusalem. May you see the good of Jerusalem. That means, it is not you only who are blessed. But your fellow Israelites are blessed. Right? And all the days of your life. So, your community is blessed all the days of your life. And in verse 6, you see, wow, you got long life. You may see your children's children and their children. And you become great, great uncle. Wow, it is a blessing. Now, but. But I want to point this to you. If every one of us does our part, the blessing will go to the community in the family of God. So we started by saying, blessed is everyone. So from the one, it goes on to the family, right? So at your in your house, your wife is there, at your table, your children are there. So from one, from you, the blessing extends to your family. And from your family extends to the community. You see the good of Jerusalem all the days of your life. <clears throat> you follow me? So every one of us has an impact in the community that we live. If we all come to Bethesda Cathedral every week and we do our own things and don't care, it will never be. But we come because as I do my part and you do your part, and as I train up my family and you train up your family, I love my, my wife, I love my husband, you do the same and so on. And you see the church as one. 
we will be a blessing to everyone in this church. And of course, God willing, to the rest of the community in Chai Chi and elsewhere. Okay? So this is really, really a wonderful psalm. And if you can read this 127 and 128 together, beautiful. The last part say, Peace be upon Israel. Peace. Now, is Israel enjoying peace now? No, not yet. But it will be. But it starts with the individual, then to his family, then to the community, and then to the whole of Israel. Now, before the fall, the fall of Adam and Eve, before the fall, paradise, you know it's paradise, right? Garden of Eden. Before the fall, paradise was man's home. After the fall, the home is man's paradise. After the fall, hey, this world is run by the prince of this world, Satan. So now, after the fall, your home is your paradise. So build your home. My God's grace. Amen.